Hello everybody, this is Mr. Brackett. Uh, I apologize, I have a bit of a cold, so my voice might sound different. Uh, this is an instructional video on using an allow list in Lightspeed Classroom. Uh, the first thing that you want to do is refer to the email that I sent uh, recently that has the allow list uh, that I'm using. Um, I think when I pull that email up, the allow list looks like this. So you'll want to download that or copy that information out somehow. Um, I think I probably still have it on my desktop. Um, so give me a second to pull that up. There it is. So I've got that list right here. Um, but if it's in your email, you'll want to download it uh, so that you can copy what's in it. Uh, then the other thing you're going to do is go to Lightspeed Classroom. I've got a little shortcut uh, bookmark on uh, my bookmark bar. Uh, it's classroom.lightspeedsystems.app. Uh, you'll pass your Google credentials as your identifier. Uh, to get into the system. Uh, then once the system loads, you should end up, well, that's not it. That's the filter. So it has delivered me to the wrong place. Classroom Lightspeed Systems app. There we go. So it delivers you to a place that looks like this. It says Lightspeed Classroom Management in the upper right-hand corner. This is a list of my current Google Classrooms that I've set up. Uh, I'm going to click on my computers class, which is my middle school student classroom. And you'll see here that it lists out all of the students. Up at the top it says the class is not currently in schedule. Uh, and that's because right now my I'm recording this video in the morning. I don't have my students until this afternoon. But I've created a custom schedule for them Monday through Friday. Uh, during the times that my class meets um, so that's why none of them are showing up but you see right here it says allow mode if you click on this yours might say off so it could be that yours says web rules off like this but if you click in here what you'll see is um, that you have an allow mode and a block mode um, if you click on block mode, you're basically creating a list of websites that students can't go to while they're in your uh, Lightspeed classroom. Uh, that list is sometimes harder to build because once you block a site, students find a new one, and then you block that one, and then they find a new one. Uh, so it's much better to go with an allow mode, um, and yours might not have this. It might say nothing. Uh, it might say no lists right here. And if it does, you're going to say create an allow list. Uh, and then it's going to call it my new allow list. Um, you can edit that name to be whatever you want it to be. You can even change its color. I don't know why you would want to do that, but you could, I guess. So we'll say orange. Now uh, you got this little orange shield this turns it on and off uh, so if I turned it on um, then it would be in place if I turned it off uh, then the students are free to go wherever they want um, but you see obviously right here it says zero that means I don't have any sites in my allow list less allow list yet so I'm going to click down here where it says add website URLs. Then I'm going to go back to that document that I had. And I'm going to take all of those and I'm just going to copy them all into here. And you say you see that there's 43 of them. Uh, you click save. And now it says that your allow list has 43. And you can turn this list on. And now that it has some entries, you couldn't when it had zero entries. And now you can turn it on, and down here it says Apply Allow Changes. So now here you see that it says Allow Mode. 
Uh, that means that when my students come into my class this afternoon, the only sites that they'll be allowed to visit are these sites that are in my allow list. This ends up working really well uh, for students because it keeps them from the game sites and the other uh, social media sites. Most social media sites are blocked by our campus-wide filter, but um, if you ever find that there's a website that your students can't get to that you need them to get to because um, you're working with them on a particular site, you just add it to the list. So in order to add something to the allow list, you would go down to the bottom, hit return, and say I want my students to be able to go to Yahoo. You typed in Yahoo, and then you see the little green check mark shows up next to it once the filter system recognizes that that's a site. Of course, I don't want them to go to Yahoo, so I'm going to take that back out. But it's very easy to be able to allow the uh, any additional sites. Um, let's say you need them to go to CNN one day. So uh, you can put that in there. Uh, and then your allow list number goes up to 44. You click save. Uh, then you come out here. You see that it says 44. Uh, you want to be sure to apply those allow changes. And it says success changes saved. So that's basically how you would do that. Uh, if you have any questions, please let me know. Thanks.